Before starting up, take a look at some basic definitions in brief. Number one, conductors. These are the materials that allow flow of charge through them. Examples include metals such as copper in common lamp wire, comma tap water, and human body. Human body is similar to tap water. Here it is important to note that carbon in form of graphite is also a conductor, although it is a non-metal. Insulators. These are the materials which do not allow movement of charge through them. Examples are rubber, plastic, glass and chemically pure water. Third is semiconductor. These are the materials that are intermediate between conductors and insulators. Examples of semiconductors are silicon and germanium, etc. Fourth is superconductor. These are the materials that are perfect conductors allowing charge to flow without any hindrance. Examples are mercury or lead, alloys, for example, niobium, titanium, germanium, niobium, and niobium nitride, etc. Anyway, here in the case of charging, we are not concerned with semiconductors and superconductors. Now come to the point, ways of charging. First method is charging by friction. It is the oldest method of charging. It was found that when an amber rod is rubbed with fur, the rod became negatively charged and fur positively. When two bodies are charged by friction, they acquire the same magnitude of charge but their nature always remains opposite. I mean if one body is positively, then other is negatively charged. The bodies retain their excess charges even when they are separated from each other. Here in this picture, I have two objects. It is your silk cloth and it is glass rod. Initially, both are neutral. Now, if we rub both objects with each other, the charge is transferred from one neutral object to other. So, both bodies become charged. The number of excess positive particles on one object must be equal to number of excess negative particles on the other object. Basically, in rubbing, the electrons transferred from one body to other. Now question is, how electrons are transferred and from which body? To explain this, suppose X and Y are two objects of different materials. Also suppose electrons are loosely bounded in object X as compared to object Y. Now if we rub X with Y, then due to friction, heat energy is produced. Some part of it is absorbed by atoms of material under friction and remaining part is radiated. If absorbed energy is such that it can overcome the energy required to free electrons from their atoms, then electrons can leave their atoms and these free electrons transferred from one body to other. Here, as in object X, electrons are Electrons are little loosely bounded as compared to Y. Therefore, when we rub X with Y, energy is absorbed by both X and Y and loosely bonded electrons can easily get free in X than Y and transferred from X to Y. Now consider a different situation. If energy absorbed by both X and Y exceeds the energy required to free electrons from their atoms, then rate of transfer of electrons from the object X to Y will be greater than the rate of transfer of electrons from Y to X. It is because electrons in X are loosely bonded. Electrons are negatively charged particles. Each electron has charge minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and mass 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg approximately. 
So in all above cases, X loses electrons and its mass and becomes positively charged and Y gains electrons and hence mass and becomes negatively charged. Here, loss of electrons implies loss of negative charge and mass. This implies gain of positive charge and loss of mass. Gain of electron implies gain of negative charge and gain of mass. Here we will also consider a special case in which both objects X and Y are identical. That is X and Y are made of same material. In this case, on friction, the average rate of transfer of electrons from X to Y will be equal to the average rate of transfer of electrons from Y to X. And in this case, there will not be any electron loss or gain by X or Y. Therefore, both objects X and Y remains neutral after friction. So for charging with friction, the materials of both objects should be different. Now I will discuss this case with insulators and conductors. First consider insulator. Insulator. In insulators, for example rubber, electrons do not move freely. When a surplus of charged particles, positive or negative, builds up on some part of an insulator, the excess always remains there. So if you hold one end of rubber rod, while far end is being rubbed with silk, the far end of the rod will acquire a surplus of electrons and those electrons will remain at that end. They won't flow into your hand. Now consider the case of conductor. In conductors, charged particles, usually electrons, can flow freely. When you hold one end of a copper rod and rub the other end with silk, electrons are transferred from silk to the copper rod. And these excess electrons are free to flow. Because like charges repel each other. Therefore, electrons move away from one another. Which means they travel through the rod into your hand. The human body is also a conductor. So charged particles move freely through your body towards earth. If there are no insulators between you and ground, the charge will continue to flow into the earth. As a result, you and copper rod remains neutral despite of rod being rubbed with silk. But we can always stop charge transfer to ground by just wearing insulating gloves or insulating shoes. So it is clear that in charging by friction, the two objects acquire equal and opposite charge. Now second point is, charging by friction can be applied only if at least one body is insulator. In charging by friction, the two objects acquire equal and opposite charge. Second point, Charging by friction can applied only if at least one body is insulator. Now triboelectric charging. In general, when two materials are rubbed together, the magnitude and sign of charge that each material acquires depends on how strongly it holds on into electrons. For example, if silk is rubbed against glass, the glass acquires a positive charge. It means electrons have moved from glass to the silk, giving the silk a negative charge. If silk is rubbed against amber, however, the silk becomes positively charged as electrons in this case pass from silk to the amber. This table shows the relative charging due to rubbing for a variety of materials. This relative charging is known as triboelectric charging and this series is known as triboelectric series. The more plus sign associated with a material 
the more readily it gives up electrons and becomes positively charged similarly the more minus sign for a material the more readily it acquires electrons for example we know that amber becomes negatively charged when rubbed against fur but a greater negative charge is obtained if rubber pvc or teflon is rubbed with fur instead in general when two materials in this table are rubbed together the one higher in the list becomes positively charged and the one lower in the list becomes negatively charged the greater the separation on the list the greater the magnitude of the charge what is grounding a conductor earth is a conductor because of the presence of ions and moisture in it it is also large enough that for many purposes it can be considered as a limitless reservoir of charge reservoir of charge means the addition or subtraction of electrons has a negligible effect on it so the ground remains essentially neutral at all times grounding a conductor means to provide a conducting path between it and the earth the copper rod in this figure is connected to the ground through your body when something is connected to the ground by a conductor we say that it is grounded now charging by direct contact you can charge the conductor by touching it with a charged object such as a negatively charged plastic rod when the rod is in contact with the sphere some of the electrons are transferred from the rod to the sphere remember that charge cannot flow through the rod because it is an insulator so you may need to roll the rod around the surface of the sphere in order to transfer charge from many parts of the rod if we bring a negatively charged conducting rod in contact of a charged conducting sphere then of course rolling is not required in this case electrons can easily transfer from charged rod to uncharged sphere because electrons move freely throughout the conductor and because like charges repel the electrons quickly redistribute themselves in the conductor moving as far apart as possible for a spherical conductor as far apart as possible means that the electrons are uniformly distributed on the outside surface of the sphere if you try to charge a conductor of another shape the charge is again distributed on the outside surface although for non spherical shapes the charge distribution is not uniform here in this case the uncharged body acquires the same sign of charge as the charged body the total charge is distributed between the two bodies now charging by induction there is another way to build up charge on a conductor suppose you use the same equipment as in this figure this time you hold the negatively charged rod but not touching the sphere because the electrons in the sphere are free to move they flow to the side opposite to the rod due to repulsion of electrons on negatively charged rod now if you ground the side of the conducting sphere where there is a surplus of electrons these electrons will flow to the ground when you remove the connection to the ground the net charge on the sphere is positive and the ground remains essentially neutral in this case no electrons are lost from the rod it has the same charge throughout the process in fact you could reuse the rod to charge another conductor by same method without recharging the rod again this process is known as induction in this process the charged rod never touches the sphere the charge that is induced on the sphere has the opposite sign as the charged rod